be knowingly the empty, luminous, loving space of awareness. in which all experience arises. With which all experience is known. And out of which all experience is made. empty because prior to the arising of any experience the space of awareness is without any objective qualities or features it has no form or color or shape of its own there is nothing in itself other than itself it is on account of the emptiness of awareness that the fullness of experience is able to arise within it If awareness were not empty, there would be no room for experience in it. In just the same way that it is on account of the emptiness of the physical space of this room. That there is room for all of us within it. luminous because it is the space of awareness that illuminates or renders knowable all experience it is the knowing element in all experience And as all there is to experience is the knowing of it. Awareness itself is the totality of our experience.
and loving because this space of awareness welcomes and embraces all experience irrespective of its content. It doesn't choose or discriminate between experiences. A thought or a feeling may arise within awareness which says, I don't like this. I don't want this. But awareness itself never says that. Like the space of this room, relatively speaking, it allows everything indiscriminately within it. the space of this room, the presence of awareness cannot be disturbed. Its inherently peaceful nature is not dependent upon what is or is not taking place within it. essential peace of our true nature is not dependent on what is or is not taking place in experience. It is prior to experience. Therefore, in order to access this peace, we do not need to manipulate our experience. Just as the screen is equally visible during all movies, so this piece is equally available during all experience.
and see that nothing that takes place in experience adds anything to or removes anything from. This basic space of awareness. In other words, its fullness or its completeness, its wholeness is not dependent on experience. It is unconditionally fulfilled. It stands to gain nothing nor lose anything from experience. It has no investment in experience. It is in this context that Krishnamurti, when asked what his secret was, responded, I don't mind what happens. be knowingly the empty, luminous, loving, inherently peaceful and unconditionally fulfilled space-like presence of awareness in which all experience arises, with which all experience is known and out of which all experience is made. We don't have to become this presence of awareness or cultivate these qualities. Through any effort or discipline of the mind. No activity or cessation of activity of the mind makes any difference to our essential nature of pure awareness. We simply have to recognize what we always and already are and take our stand as that, to be that knowingly. We cannot become what we already are and we cannot be what we are not.
be sensitive to any feelings of boredom, restlessness or irritation. These feelings are all variations of a single feeling. I don't like what is present. I want what is not present. And this feeling itself is based upon the belief that the happiness we long for or the enlightenment we seek can be found in some kind of object or state of mind in the future. states of mind, from a deep depression to a sublime samadhi, are temporary. They cannot, therefore, be the source of lasting peace and happiness. to seek lasting happiness in an object, a substance, an activity or a relationship is the madness from which most people suffer. To seek enlightenment in a state of mind is the madness from which most spiritual seekers suffer. Enlightenment has nothing to do with the content of our minds, although it does have an effect on the content of our minds. It is the recognition of the essential nature of our mind, irrespective of its content. And the essential nature of our minds is present in all experience. No particular experience can bring us closer to it than any other experience. Just as the screen is not more visible in certain types of movie than others. The visibility of the screen is independent of the content of the movie.
the essential nature of our mind shines brightly in all experience, from a deep depression to a sublime samadhi and everything in between. It is the knowing with which all experience is known. It cannot be known as an object of experience and yet all experience is only that. A mind that seeks happiness in objects or enlightenment in states of mind is destined for a life of misery punctuated by brief moments of respite. have the, the courage and the clarity to face that fact. A mind that longs for happiness or seeks enlightenment must sink deeply into the ocean of awareness from which it has risen. Everything that it truly longs for lives there.
a mind that is accustomed to sinking regularly into the ocean of awareness becomes progressively saturated with its peace. And as such a mind rises again, it brings this peace with it out into the world, into its activities and relationships. When I refer to the objects of experience appearing and disappearing in the space of awareness, or the mind rising and falling in the ocean of awareness, I subtly imply that mind or the objects of experience are one thing and the space or ocean of awareness another. That is not intended, it is just a manner of speaking. All that is or could ever be known is experience. All experience takes place in the mind and all there is to mind is consciousness or the knowing of it. In other words, all that is ever experienced is the activity of consciousness and it is consciousness that is experiencing it. or visualize consciousness like a, an ocean of water. The waking state is like the waves on the surface of the ocean. The dream state is like the currents in the middle of the ocean. Deep sleep is like the stillness at the depths of the ocean. But all there is to the waves, the currents and the depths of the ocean is water. <coughs> it's all a movement of water. All there is to experience is consciousness, knowing, awareness. It's all a movement of knowing, the activity of consciousness. The 
the water itself goes into the movement of the waves and the currents and also the stillness of the depths. In other words, the water can be either in motion or still. And therefore, neither motion nor stillness are inherent in it because it can appear in either condition. Its nature is prior to and at the same time within all movement and stillness. Just as the water is equally present in all parts of the ocean, so awareness or pure knowing is equally present in all experience. All there is to a deep depression is the knowing of it. All there is to a sublime samadhi is the knowing of it. All there is to the taste of tea is the knowing of it. Nothing other than knowing is ever known and it is knowing that knows this knowing. and having nothing in itself other than itself. There is nothing in knowing with which it could be divided, just as there is nothing in an ocean other than water. And as a result, the ocean is never divided into parts. It is always a single, homogeneous, indivisible whole. And everything that appears in or on the ocean is a temporary modulation of that unlimited and indivisible whole. The ocean, the water never ceases to be water in order to become a wave. And therefore in the form of the wave, the water doesn't have to return to itself. It never ceases to be itself. Likewise, this knowing or pure consciousness never becomes anything other than itself. It simply modulates itself in all the forms of experience. breakfast this morning, Ken told me that in Peru the name for a person is animated earth. It's a beautiful understanding. But our name for a person here is condensed consciousness. just as the dream that we have at night is, as it were, a a condensation 
or precipitation within our own minds, of our own minds. So each of our minds is a condensation or a precipitation of consciousness within consciousness, known by consciousness. the mind that seeks happiness or enlightenment or the heart that longs for God's presence is like a current in the ocean in search of water. Let your longing come to rest in this understanding. Don't allow the forms of experience to veil or obscure their reality. Experience can be seen to either veil its reality or shine with its reality, depending on the view we take of it. Just as a, a movie can be seen to either veil the screen or shine with the presence of the screen, depending on how we look at it. The only difference between most people and people like Ramana Maharshi or Krishna Menon or the Buddha is that most people only see the movie. 
people like Ramana Maharshi, Atmananda and the Buddha, Buddha. They watch the movie, but they only see the screen. That's the only difference. We all watch the same movie. But how we see dictates what we see. The world is not what we see, it is how we see. The world is the world is not a, a great machine. It is a great thought in the mind of God. <clears throat> 